Today's Wheel and Anchor webinar is our Safari by Land and Sea. This is a trip to South Africa and the Seychelles uh, that we are heading on uh, next year, uh, specifically in November of 2023. Uh, and uh, so today's webinar is, uh, we're, we're going to obviously talk a lot about that. For the members who have not been on a Wheel and Anchor webinar before uh, or uh, perhaps haven't uh, are new to us. We've had numerous members uh, joining us in the last uh, week or so. Uh, and uh, so I just a, a quick few words about who we are as an organization. And first and foremost, um, you know, we are a travel community. And uh, what brings us all together is a, a like minded uh, view of how we should go out and how we should go forth and see the world. Um, we're uh, we really, it, I, I sort of, like, we're akin to like, a, you know, a social club or a golf club or a tennis club or something like that, where, you know, people get to know each other, um, oftentimes become friends outside of traveling. Uh, and, you know, when we get together, whether we know the other members or not, there's always that feeling of camaraderie. And that's what makes our trips, among other things, particularly special, is because you get a bunch of people who have, you know, kind of the same outlook on you know, how travel should happen, and how we should enjoy and experience the world. Um, and of course, everybody has their different nuances. Some people are more active and some people less so, and some people like history and culture and other people like landscapes and scenery. Of course, we're all a bit different, but we definitely have that common thread of, uh, a, a, of a, a passion for travel. And that's what brings us together as travelers. And my personal mission for our members at Wheel and Anchor is to become well-traveled, well-connected. Um, and we do that in the way that we design our trips, um, which are influenced by our members. And, you know, they, um, we, we, we always look to our members for guidance in where we're going and how we like to travel. And so as a result, we have designed trips that are slowed down uh, largely. Um, we love to stay, you know, at least on trips like this, experiential trips, at least three day, three nights in a place. Not always possible um, because it just logistics don't make it uh, uh, logical. Logistics don't make it logical or, or in my statement of the day. Um, but um, as I say, by, by doing trips a little bit slower, um, we get connected to um, the local environment, the people, um, and to our fellow travelers. And so that's really what we're all about. Uh, and so on that note, I'd like to introduce our team. And for those of you who've been on many webinars, you'll notice some, some changes on the team slide here. So my name is Gordon. I'm the founder of Wheel and Anchor. Uh, and uh, I will be presenting today uh, with my colleagues, um, Paula Sarnik. I know that you have spoken to Paula on the phone. She is our team uh, lead uh, of, our C our, of our trip specialists. Um, and I'd, I'm also introducing Barbara today. Um, she's in the background, uh, and Barb is a newest member of our trip specialist team working alongside Paula, uh, and we're very excited to have her uh, because we've had so many so many inquiries in the last uh, few months that we uh, we needed to bolster our team as so we have a very experienced uh, person who's joined us. So welcome to Barb. Uh, and then our special guest, my uh, dear friend, I'd like to count you as a friend, Jackie, and we don't know each other that well, but we have traveled through South Africa together, joining us all the way from Cape Town. Thank you for being with us today and sorting out all your problems. It must be cold there by the looks of your <laughs> Does it look cold? It is cold. <laughs> We're in the middle of winter. Not a good time to be in Cape Town. Yeah, exactly. So middle of the winter there, middle of summer in Canada, uh, and I'm back at home in Thailand where it's quite warm. So uh uh, in, in any event, Jackie is uh, whom we work with in South Africa and does the local logistics as well as um, accompanying the trip. Uh, and we've traveled together before, and I think she's one of the best uh, and uh, is uh, going to create a magical experience for us. Today's agenda is about taking you on a safari and not just a safari, because this trip, as you'll see in a moment, is much more than just about the safari, both in South Africa and then the marine safari, as I like to call it, um, up to the Seychelles. And I'm going to be on that, uh, sh uh, showing you on our digital journey today um, as we look at that, uh, as we look at the itinerary for uh, November of next year. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's look at the map. This program is kind of a two in one, right? So you can do either or South Africa and the Seychelles. 
Uh, and so I put this together because uh, I think that both have very uh, distinct uh, flora, fauna. Uh, I mean, we're here about the nature, particularly in uh, in the Seychelles and Cape Town, uh, sorry, uh, South Africa, of course, as well. Um, but we're also going to see some of the great culture, the food, the wine that um, uh, South Africa is so well known for. So the program will begin in Cape Town. That's where you'll fly into. Uh, and I won't get into the logistics of that. But basically, these days, uh, pretty much all flights go via Europe. So you connect in London or Frankfurt or Amsterdam or Paris. Uh, and then you can fly down to Cape Town from there. So it's a bit of a long haul, but we'll spend a few days to uh, so you can sort of get rested up um, and also enjoy this incredible city. We'll travel then overland through the Cape Winelands into the Karoo um, and then down to the Garden Route. So it's sort of along the coast for a bit. Um, and then our uh, the culmination of our part of our journey in South Africa will be at Kwandwe, which we'll spend some time talking about in a moment before we fly up to Johannesburg. And then for those who are um, heading home or perhaps going elsewhere in Africa, um, Johannesburg is a great gateway. Uh, and then for those who are joining us in the Seychelles, we'll fly from Johannesburg up to Victoria, which is the capital city uh, on the island of Mahe. Uh, we'll spend a night there before joining our yacht that will take us around some of the beautiful islands of the Seychelles uh, over a week's journey. So um, that is the program in a nutshell. Let's now look at the day to day. And this is where Jackie is going to um, uh, remind me of all of the amazing highlights that there are in South Africa. Um, and as I say, we're going to we're going to start in Cape Town. Uh, where you'll fly to and um, you'll likely arrive, uh, well, it depends on obviously the flight combination. In any event, as with most of our trips, you will have a private uh, meet and greet and transfer into our hotel in Cape Town uh, and you'll have time to rest up because let's face it, it is a bit of a journey to get from Canada all the way to uh, the uh, southern tip of uh, South a so, uh, of Africa. Um, and, uh, you know, then We'll have a couple of days to really take in this amazing city. Uh, and, you know, you've all seen pictures with Table Mountain uh, and, uh, you know, the, the incredible backdrop of the city on the ocean, on the, on the, um, which is basically on the Atlantic, it's really the Atlantic Ocean at this point, it's because the Cape of Good Hope is separating the Atlantic from the Indian Ocean. That's right. Oh, Golden. <laughs> it's uh, it, it's all Atlantic Ocean. Yeah. The Cape of oh. Good Hope. The... <laughs> I think we've I think we've been there before. <laughs> I, think, I think we have been there before. There you go. You failed my geography lesson today. Um, tell us a little bit about what we're gonna do uh, on our uh, days in Cape Town. Okay, so um, we're pretty much going to cover all of the highlights of Cape Town. Um, of course, we're going to have a trip up Table Mountain, and this this picture is taken from the top of Table Mountain, um, looking out over Table Bay and the city. That's Lion's Head with that sort of little pimple, Signal Hill, and then just beyond Signal Hill in Table Bay, that's Robin Island. Um, so this is these are all iconic features in Cape Town. Um, we will spend some time on Table Mountain. We will spend some time in the city. Um, we will not go to Table to Robin Island, and and the reason for that is really just the the logistical hassles we're having at the moment with Robin Island, and that's a long term thing. However, we're going to do something much cooler, and we're actually going to bring Robin Island to you. Um, we're going to meet with uh, Christo Brunt, who was Nelson Mandela's um, warder for the full time that he was in um, on Robben Island and when he came in um, off came ashore to um, to Polsmore prison. Um, so I think Christo spent about 19 of the 27 years that that um, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned as Nelson Mandela's personal warder um, and they developed a very deep friendship. Um, and and Christo, uh, we'll, so we'll meet with Christo and hear his story and um, have the opportunity to just kind of pick his brain about life with Mandela. Um, we'll uh, also, you know, you'll have a, a fair amount of free time to just explore 
the waterfront on your own, to do some shopping, to visit some of the wonderful galleries and museums. Um, we will, of course, do a city tour that takes in all of the historical highlights of the city. Um, we do you want me to go through the, the full the full program while we're in Cape Town, just all the, the highlights in Cape Town? I think you I think you touched on sort of the highlights there. I mean, yeah. this, uh, you know, this program, we spend three nights in Cape Town and the day that you arrive, you know, you, our hotel is centrally located, you can, you can, you can walk around in Cape Town, certainly during the day without any problem and to the waterfront and, you know, really take in the city. But, you know, it's like so many places, there's so many things to do and enjoy here that, it, you know, you may wish to, to pop in a, a couple of days early, just so that you, um, you know, you can do all the things that, you know, that, that one can do while in Cape Town. Uh, and so, uh, our program covers the main highlights, um, and yet uh, I know the last time I was in Cape Town, I was there for two weeks, uh, and yeah, I mean, just had a marvelous time. So, um, in any case, uh, as Jackie says, we'll take in a lot of Cape Town itself, um, but of course, when you're in this part of the world, you can't not go to Cape Point or Cape Peninsula, as it's mentioned here. Um, this is a quick snapshot of the last group I brought to uh, Cape Town that uh, Jackie and I did together, actually. Jackie will probably maybe even recognize a few of the faces. This goes back a few years. This actually just predates um, when we formally started Wheel and Anchor. Um, but you can see all the smiling, smiling faces there. And this is actually taken on Chapman's Peak Road, which is the road that goes between Cape Town and uh, the Cape of Good Hope. Uh, and it in and itself is a spectacularly beautiful drive, as you can see by this picture. Uh, and uh, it, it's it's just, you know, the scenery this is one of the things I like about South Africa is, is that no matter where you go, you have just an amazing uh, scenery. And so um, we will go down to Cape Peninsula and I'll leave the picture up there for a moment. Uh, and uh, we'll see, among other things, penguins. Right, Jackie? Yeah, so there's a... Um a vagrant penguin colony um, at uh, at Boulders Beach, which is along the route, and uh, there are about three and a half thousand African penguins. So those of you who've been to the Galapagos, um, you would have seen the Galapagos penguins, and these the African penguins look very similar. They're a little smaller, um, and they're all over the beach, and uh, so it's it's. It, it's quite unusual to be seeing penguins in in Africa, I think, and certainly on a beach um, where everybody is is kind of lying around on, and playing on the beach and their penguins penguins around. But um, but yeah, we have a big um, a lot. I would say a large. It's 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 a large colony um, and uh, started from a few vagrant birds in the, in the early eighties, and it's become quite the tourist attraction. So um, so we'll definitely stop by and visit. And you know, even though it's it's sort of on the way, but you know, as Jackie said, it's now the thing that people want to go and see. I mean, Cape Point, in and of itself, you know, has a has a lighthouse on it, dramatic scenery, uh, and you know, it's sort of a rite of passage to go to go there and and spend some time. Um, but you know, you can't beat penguins for uh, you know causing a lot of amusement and 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 a lot of attraction. So just thought I'd I'd mention that there. Um, so after our few days in Cape Town, um, we will begin our journey that will first take us into the, the so-called Cape Wineland. So this is really the heart of South African winemaking. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we've all probably tried South African wines. They're available in, in you know, in the liquor stores or in stores in, in, in Canada. But, you know, like so many countries, the, 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 the breadth of, of wine that's available here is so much more than we could possibly um, get at home. And so um, one of our first stops in the in the Winelands is at, uh, was actually on the way to the Winelands because I think this is at the base of Table Mountain is at Kirstenbosch. Um, so uh, give us a couple of uh, points about Kirstenbosch and, and why we're gonna visit this incredible botanical garden. Well, um, it's, <sighs> It's our sort of flagship botanical garden in South Africa. Um, it was actually land that was owned by Cecil John Rhodes, and he he had the vision to establish a botanical garden there. Um, but he died before anything could be done about it, and it was the chair of botany 
at the University of Cape Town that um, actually started the garden project. So it's been around since 1913. Um, the garden itself is uh, actually extends all the way up to the back of Table Mountain to pretty much to the skyline that you can see in the photo. But um, 90 acres is under cultivation um, and it is all indigenous plants, not necessarily to the Cape, but to South Africa. So every single plant in the garden is a tree or a, a shrub or a flower that is indigenous to somewhere in South Africa. Yeah. Um, it, it really is quite spectacular. It's a beautifully, it's a beautifully laid out garden. Um, and it's, uh, it's ex extremely important, both from a scientific and botanical point of view, um, and also incredibly popular just from, you know, with families and um, travelers and visitors just for the sheer beauty. Um, so, and, and November is sort of late spring, early summer. So the garden should be looking quite, quite pretty. There'll be a lot of, a lot of plants that'll be flowering. Um, we also have a whole section that's dedicated to medicinal plants because medicinal plants are very important in, in Africa and particularly in Southern Africa. Um, so it's, it's educational, it's beautiful, it's um, relaxing. Yeah, it is. It's a great stop on our way up uh, to uh, to Franschhoek, uh, which is uh, where we're going to be staying. And um, we're staying up here at a, at a at quite a special place. And I think that this was a, a new addition to the program at uh, at Boschendal Farm. Um, and so, say say a few words about this location because I think it's important. Again, I alluded to South African wines and the and the Wineland area and all the rest of it, but um, Boschendal in and of itself is kind of a neat place because it's not your average hotel. Yeah, so Boschendal, you're right, it's a special spot. So another property belonging to Cecil John Rhodes um, way back. Uh, it's a very, very historic property and uh, one of the first to start producing wine in, in the Cape. Um, it's now uh, privately owned and um, it's on a, it's a very large winery. They have a lot of orchards, um, but it's also that they, they have moved over to organic farming. So they farm um, beef, they farm uh, chicken, um, lamb, and then they have a massive uh, organic vegetable farm. And now they farm guests too. Um, and so <laughs> it is, it is, as you say, it's not a traditional hotel. Um, the accommodation is all in a series of cottages, um, one, two, three, and four bedroomed cottages. Um, and so we'll be um, staying in a series of three, two and three bedroomed cottages. Now these are all, all of these bedrooms are en suite. Um, but uh, the idea is that you have that Cape Farm experience um, so that you're in amongst, the or in, in amongst the orchards and the vineyards. And that is the view that you actually see from your cottages. Um, and you have everything that is on the farm at your disposal. At your disposal. Um, and so I, I think it's a very special spot because it's not your, as, as Gordon says, not your typical um, hotel, but it is your sort of accommodation in the Winelands. So um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm excited about it. Uh, yeah. I think it's a, I think it's a lovely spot. I'm super excited about this uh, particular place because again, it's, we're, we're taking a departure from the usual tourist sort of stop to, to enjoy a place like this. And, you know, French Hook in general, um, with all the wines there, and, you know, we're going to do a wine tasting lunch, so you'll get a sampling of it, you'll have more at dinner. Um, and, you know, you'll, you'll undoubtedly want to pack a few bottles for our onward journey, because it's, it's again, it is really become, I think, it's fair to say, Jackie, the heart of winemaking in South Africa is, is centered around this area, Franschhoek, Stellenbosch, um, you would have heard of Arl, these are all towns in this area with the beautiful mountain range in behind, it's, it's amazing country. So, um, so we'll have a couple of days, a couple of nights at the farm uh, and enjoying the winelands. We'll then head, to, we'll continue to the east into an area called the Karoo. So uh, people may have heard the term Karoo before. 
but what makes this part of South Africa distinct? Well, the picture kind of already explains a little bit of it, but <laughs> tell us about the Karoo. Well, in, in the um, indigenous language, Karoo actually means thirst land. Um, and so this is an area, it's a sort of a valley area between uh, or just behind the coastal mountain range. Um, so it's, it's kind of in the, the lee of the mountains and, uh, and it's quite dry. Um, that said, however, um, Prince Albert is sort of the gateway between the small Karoo and the, and the big Karoo, the great Karoo. Um, and, and while it is still very firmly in the Karoo, it's actually a very um, farming rich area. Uh, so it's, it has an interesting history from way, way back, sort of they found um, remnants of civilization and rock paintings dating back about 25,000 years. Um, so some of Africa's original people lived here. Um, and then, of course, the, the first Europeans to inhabit the area were Dutch settlers uh, around the late 1700s. Um, and that's really when the, the, the um, Prince Albert sort of started to grow as a, as a, as a village. Um, and then, of course, when the British took over governance of the Cape, um, it was renamed after Queen Victoria's um, consort. So um, Prince Albert today is still a thriving um, agricultural town. Uh, olives and grapes are two of the sort of the big produces, uh, products that they, that they produce here. Um, but the town itself is interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to explore the, the wines and the and the um, the olives. We are also going to um, explore a little bit of the history through the town's ghosts um, and the the current um, one of the current trends within Prince Albert is is it's an artist's haven. So there are a lot of art artists. There are a lot of um, organic producers. There are a lot of artisanal producers, and uh, there is a cooking school. Um, and so food has become an, one of the central sort of attractions in Prince Albert. So we're going to get our, roll up our sleeves and get involved in some of that. So again, this is just something, this is not on the tour, on the main tourist route. This is very much on a local tourist route, particularly tourists from, or visitors from Cape Town. Um, but it really does give us a good idea of the history of the area. And just, it gives, you know, travelers like yourselves a feel for how, you know what we do um and how we relax and the the sort of the the current trends in in south africa at the moment yeah and that's and that's you that's such an important point because you know you mentioned that you know food and 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 this is one of the things about south africa in general that i say to people that i love about south africa the food culture there the cuisine is next level i mean it is really amazing and uh, you know, people are sort of tend to be surprised because, you know, you think of South Africa, what images come to your mind, you know, it's obviously Nelson Mandela and it's, you know, safaris and Kruger Park and all the rest of it. But I think for me, uh, and what sets it apart is really the cuisine and coming to a place like this, which is a heart of sort of an, an, an one of the agricultural heartlands, if you will, uh, and, a, and a destination for locals is, is quite a special experience. So, um, uh, as Jackie said, we'll spend some time in Prince Albert. Um, we'll enjoy a foodie tour there. They they uh, um, raise ostrich uh, and um, uh, sheep, uh, and you know in South Africa, I think they eat everything that moves just about. <laughs> so we'll get to we'll get to sample uh, all of these uh, all of these uh, different things that are produced uh, both both. Um, plants and animals <laughs> and it'll be uh, it'll be really really special um again we continue then east from here so we're going to move out of uh the the the, the, the klein karoo or the small karoo um and we're going to head out towards um Utshorn. did i pronounce that right close close enough close enough <laughs> <laughs> okay so talk, talking about uh ostriches and ostrich country <laughs> yes so yeah so so we will we, we can't be in the area and not visit the ostrich farms um this oats, oats is the um 
is the the center of the ostrich industry in South Africa, and there's also some very interesting history associated with that. Uh, so we will uh, visit an ostrich farm. They're all commercial ostrich farms. Um, we'll have an opportunity to indulge in some ostrich uh, steaks. Um, and ostrich meat is actually really a delicious meat. It's a red meat and um, very low in cholesterol and um, very low in fat and, and a really quite a delicious meat. So it's very popular in South Africa. Um, we'll also visit um, a very large network of limestone caves, um, the Kango Caves. And uh, this is this is one of the features that sort of put Otsun on the map as a tourist destination. So we'll we we'll see that, um, and then from here we'll we'll start moving towards the ocean. Exactly. So we head back down to the east and to the south. We'll be approaching the ocean ocean again, uh, and we now head gradually into a region which is known as the Garden Route. Uh, and so uh, in here we will stop first of all, I guess at Tsitsikama, uh, again, if I pronounce that right, uh, and uh, well, tell us what we can expect again on this day and, and some of the stops that we're going to see. Okay, so um, so what we'll see while we're in the garden route um, is, so the garden route is, is called the, uh, such because um, it has some very lush uh, indigenous forests all the way up and down the coast. Um, and Naisna, which is uh, sort of the, the main sort of gateway town to the to the garden route, is is we'll stop we'll spend some time there, and you'll see you can see the lagoon in the background of this photograph, and we'll spend some time on the lagoon. Um, we have an, an east head and a west head, um, and we'll be heading to the west head, um, and which is a private nature reserve. Um, so there's a there's a, a sort of a day of exploring um, from which you can you can see you know the, the lagoon and the other head and um, just enjoying a little bit of an Eisner um, and then a little further down the coast we have Plettenberg Bay we'll spend some time at Plettenberg Bay um, and and then further um, further east I guess from there northeast is we'll get to Titsikama um, and this is sort of the, the heartland of the indigenous forests and we have the Titsikama National Park and we'll be spending a day in the Titsikama National Park where we will uh, visit the Storms River Mouth which is what we see right there um, and uh, there's a some petrified forest, um, or the, the remains of a petrified forest. Um, and then of course, the swing bridge across the, not the swing bridge, the um, suspension bridge across the, um, the mouth of the, of the Storms River. Um, so this is very much a, a, a sort of a sightseeing and, and um, natural encounters um, experience um, and, and just, lots of photographs, lots of views and beautiful, beautiful coastline. Um, and then you'll we'll also have an opportunity to get into the forest and um, just do some excursions in the forest. And uh, this is all just beautiful um, indigenous forest with massive um, old hardwoods. So um, uh, just a, a quite a spectacular part of the coast. Indeed. And so again, if it, to, to, to highlight you know, the beauty of this trip is, is that, you know, it takes us from Cape Town and the city and it takes us up into the Cape Winelands and we have the backdrop of the mountains and then into the Karoo and it's very dry and arid and then you get into the, uh, uh, you know, the agricultural area around Oudshorn and then back to the coast. So, you know, the scenery here is I can't, uh, I can't say enough about how spectacular it is, the, um, you know, all of the, the scenery that we're going to catch along the way. Um, so we'll then head out of the garden route, we'll head north, and then we get to, um, I hate to say the highlight, because everything's a highlight, but but Kwandwe is something special in and of itself, and I know that a lot of people associate um, safari with um, Kruger in South Africa, um, but, you know, Kwandwe is something different, and so I've got some images here to show from it. Um, and we're going to spend a few nights here. At, this is a private game reserve. Um, Jackie, tell us all about it and why we've picked this particular spot to go uh, on our South African safari. Well, 
we really like Kwandwe because it's privately owned, it's family owned. Um, it's a it's about a 45,000 acre reserve um, in the Eastern Cape. Now the Eastern Cape, you know, traditionally is not known as a safari destination, but it actually has um, many of um, many of the safari, many of the reserves have been around for a long time in the Eastern Cape. Um, and so, I mean, Addo National Park is a, is a very well-known national park. Um, and so a lot of these private reserves have popped up around and close to Addo. Um, and they form this corridor of natural areas and, and private reserves. What we particularly like about Kwandwe, apart from the fact that it is um, luxurious um, is that you can see everything that you would see in Kruger um, and more. Um, because the vegetation is very different from Kruger, the west, the, the, the Eastern Cape vegetation you can see is a lot lower. Um, it's not as that thick bush that you get up at Kruger. It makes game viewing a lot easier. Um, but also we see some incredible animal interactions in um, in Kwandwe that we just don't see in the older reserves. I mean, Kruger's been around since 1898, um, and you know everything is is very established and sort of and there's large tracts. Kruger's like what's it, uh, the size of New Jersey, so there's a lot of place where animals can hide, and you'll just never see them. Um, whereas a place like Kwandwe, um, even though there are still lots of areas off-road, uh, we can drive off-road, which we can't do in Kruger. Um, and so we can go looking for animals. We see interactions between different species of animals. We see and interactions within the same species of animals that you just don't see anywhere else. So it really um, enhances the experience of game viewing. You're not just looking at animals and taking photographs of them you can you're actually spending time with them and observing their behavior and learning more about them and um again yeah. because it's private there is a lot of other stuff that we can do there are a lot of other activities so we can walk you can walk with big game you'll have where your guide and your tracker will carry a rifle because you might see elephants and you might see lions and you might see buffalo you have a good very, very good chance of doing that because that's what we're looking for um, so we can do that. We can, there's a, the fish, the great fish river, um, runs right through the property. So we can do boating safaris and we can go looking for birds. We can do fishing. Um, so there's just a very wide range of things that we can do in the bush. And that's, it's all about, you know, viewing game from in different ways and, and new and exciting ways. So, and, and so, yeah, I mean, you've, and you've captured it perfectly in terms of the, the benefit of going to a, a private game reserve like Quanway, notwithstanding how comfortable the place is. And so, uh, you know, I'm obviously um, showing a few slides here about what the lodge and the, I guess, are they called cottages, the rooms, or are they? Uh, suites. Uh, suites. Well, appropriately <laughs> named. <laughs> So tell us a bit about the lodge itself. Um, I mean, I think the pictures kind of speak a thousand words, as they say. <laughs> yeah. Well, there are two. So there are two lodges that um, that get, you know are sold room by room, and then there are a few um, exclusive use properties. We will be. Um, we have actually booked out one whole lodge um, for uh, for the Wheel and Anchor Group. So. Um, the, and that the benefit of, of, of again, of, of private reserve like this and a smallish lodge is that you can have it to yourself, um, which means that you don't have to follow the regular timetable um, because there are no other people in the lodge. Um, so, you know, we can start our game drives a little earlier or a little later. We can take them a little longer. Um, you know, we can adjust the, the meal schedules to suit the group. So um, we have a lot more flexibility just with our, our daily itinerary. Um, and, you know, we, there's, there's nobody else around. It means that, you know, you can do whatever you want to do. Of course, what, <laughs> what happens on tour stays on tour. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's a, 
it's um it's and and super comfortable i mean it's these are luxury luxury rooms um so definitely i would say the pinnacle of the accommodation spectrum on on this on this trip yeah and 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 it, it it makes such a difference i mean for those who've maybe been on safari before and been on different but you know having a lodge like this privately owned the attention to detail the you know the luxurious accommodations you know, dinner outside, like you see here. This is, is this, a, is this the dinner on the premises or is this a bush dinner? It's shown so this is the Boma dinner. Um, yeah. So it's, yeah, so this is on the premises. I mean, it's, it's sort of just a look, set a little way from the main area, but it is outdoors. Yeah. And so you can see, you can imagine this experience of being out here in this incredible wilderness, surrounded by all these animals. And here you are. And, and a, and a wall <laughs> so you can enjoy a you know a, a a a barbecue dinner in the true south african um in the true south african fashion so so yeah kwandwe is 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 really so different and so special and we worked hard with or well jackie in particular worked hard to for us to be able to secure a whole lodge um which again makes it very special because it's just not something that um you know you you will find on your on your average tour through South Africa so this is anything but um and our stay at Kwandwe will 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 be the end of our of our uh, of our two weeks in South Africa um from here we'll uh drive overland to Port Elizabeth and take a flight up to Johannesburg where we are really just making sort of a technical stop uh to accommodate flights that will depart uh the following day um and so uh, uh, you know, Johannesburg itself is, uh, you know, for, for, for those who are planning to, to continue home, you might want to spend an extra day and, and do some touring around Johannesburg. But uh, I think that the main highlights of, of South Africa, we will have covered um, in the southern part of the country. So um, from here, as I say, we'll, we'll overnight in, in Johannesburg uh, and then uh, continue our journey on from there. Uh, and so uh, Jackie will hang in with us for a minute. Uh, until we get to the Q&A section, but I just want to touch on the second part of our program, which is um, the Seychelles. Uh, and so I think the two go together in, 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 uh, in a fine way, because, you know, we'll have seen the incredible animals, the big five, hopefully, of, uh, of South Africa, the big game. Um, and then you go to the Seychelles, and it's something completely different, um, because it is a tropical island and a, and a wildlife paradise on an archipelago of islands like I have never seen, barring maybe in the Galapagos. Um, and so we'll fly up um, from Johannesburg directly to Victoria, which is on Mahe Island, the largest of the Seychelles. Um, we've picked out a lovely resort uh, to stay in so that it uh, coincides with our um, uh, our yacht program, which will leave on the following day, uh, and we will head out on this vessel, which is called uh, Pegasus. And I sailed uh, with a small group on her a few years back. Um, since then, she has been completely uh, renovated. Uh, she it was uh, just prior to the pandemic. Actually, she uh, she got a complete overhaul. So although she's not the prettiest boat on the outside, inside the finishings are really wonderful. It's a small ship. It's only 20 cabins. So the maximum you'd ever get is about 38 guests, um, which makes it a very intimate experience. Um, you've got, you know, lounging area, dining, all the, the, um, the, the ship is owned by a, a Greek family, actually. They've got a fleet of ships we work with in different parts of the world. Uh, and um, it's one of the, perhaps the only one that sails around the Seychelles archipelago, or at least the central archipelago. Um, the, you know, the cabins here, as you can see, are um, quite comfortable. They're not luxury and fancy because this is more of an expedition type of a program. Uh, and so they have everything you need. As I say, I've sailed on the boat. I uh, quite enjoyed it. Um, you know, it's comfortable uh, and it's, it's a perfect spot to go around and see some of the islands. The Seychelles is not a, a, a destination that a lot of Canadians head to for a beach holiday, as the Europeans might. Um, frankly, because it's so far away. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a long journey. When you're already in Africa, it makes sense to pop over. Um, but, um, um, you know, you're not likely going to go over and spend a week in a beach resort. There have some spectacular beach resorts there. But doing it by yacht allows us to go around to the different islands. Because if you ask me, that is what is 
particularly special about the Seychelles. And I'm going to show you lots of pictures of white sand beaches that are some of the most spectacular you've ever seen. But it's about, um, you know, the giant tortoises uh, that we'll see on an island like Curios, for example. Um, and, you know, again, maybe in the Galapagos, there's not a lot of places where you can see these incredible animals um, sort of up close and personal. So each day we stop at a different island. Um, Cousin Island, for example, has these um, endemic Seychelles warblers, uh, which, uh, again, if you are a birder, this is kind of one of the places in the world that you absolutely have to go because we'll see, see so many different um, um, uh, birds that are, again, endemic to the Seychelles. Um, the, on, on, on Cousin Island, actually, they have a bird sanctuary where they estimate some quarter of a million birds um, breeding every year. So, uh, uh, and the other thing that I really appreciate about the Seychelles as we go to these different islands is the fact that they take great care to preserve the ecology. And that's something that really impressed me that I haven't seen in too many other places. And again, I refer to the Galapagos because as far as I'm concerned, these are two um, you know, marine archipelago paradises that I think you know, if you have the, the time and the, and, the, and the wherewithal, you really ought to visit. But they take such great care of protecting everything. You know, the ship's own tender cannot even land on these islands. They send somebody from the island to the ship because they're so paranoid about any invasive species, whether it's a mouse or a, or a, or a rat or a fly or anything landing on these islands that could jeopardize um, the wildlife there. Um, so you'll see uh, also incredible rock formations. You'll see the um, uh, you'll see then, I always forget the name of you. You'll see the uh, uh, Coco de Mer palm trees, which is again, is it, which is a, 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 a palm tree uh, with, a, with a very special fruit on it that is again, you'll only find in the Seychelles Islands. Um, they make uh, a special coconut water out of these Coco de Mer plants um, that will we'll do a tour to the plantation. Um, up on uh, St. Pierre, this is one of the spots where we'll do some snorkeling and swimming. You, you'll do it basically anywhere. Anytime the ship is anchored, um, you can go swimming if we're not out on an excursion uh, and, uh, and again, take in these spectacular islands. Um, they have some places like um, Praslin. Praslin is uh, a, the island itself is a, is a world heritage site. It's, it's one of the larger islands, has a bunch of resorts on it, um, and we'll stop at Transur, which is the, um, the, the, um, arguably the, the most beautiful beach um, in uh, in the Seychelles Islands, although um, we hiked to a few different beaches when I went on this cruise some years back um, that I think rival that. Um, but nonetheless, you'll, we'll also have a chance to sort of go around some of the villages um, on these islands, like for example, in La Digue uh, is, is another island where you basically go around by uh, bicycle. Uh, and you visit the whole island. Uh, they also have like rickshaws, um, but there's no vehicles at all on the island, which makes it, a, again, a completely different and special experience. So there's so much to each of the Seychelles islands that, uh, you know, it's, it's I, I, again, I can show you some pictures that hardly does it justice, um, but each one has a, a little bit of a special um, array of, uh, of plant and animal life. Um, and, you know, we'll have different activities. We'll do a barbecue lunch uh, uh, at some of the islands. Um, and um, yeah, as I say, we'll spend an incredible week that will be, you know, relaxing after our South African adventure. Um, but also, as I say, give you an insight to, to uh, you know, a plant and animal life that you just don't find anywhere else. I really, really love the Seychelles. So um, that will wrap up the program. So in total, we're talking about three weeks um, in, uh, in South Africa the, it, and, and the Seychelles, the first part of the program here. All of the details are in the program itinerary, which we will send you together with a copy of the replay of this webinar. I'll just touch on the key points now. Um, our South Africa program, which is the first two weeks uh, shown here, everything priced in Canadian dollars. Uh, and as per usual, um, our uh, hosting is included throughout the program, all of the transportation accommodation um, on the private game reserve. It's even, um, it's all in fully inclusive, including three meals a day and all of your um, uh, drinks included in that as well. Um, we'll have 
they'll have the benefit of having Jackie along for the ride on the entire trip. And as I say, she's one of the best that I've uh, ever met in Africa. So, uh, you, you know, you're, you're, you're talking to somebody that, uh, that, that knows this country like the back of her hand. Um, on the second part in the Seychelles, we have a few different categories of cabins that are available. Again, the details you can find here, um, and that's for the whole program on the cruise, uh, which is also three meals a day. Um, the shore excursions we've put all in there and the extra night in the Seychelles. And of course, as usual, you can extend that program if you decide you really love it um, and you want to stay in the Seychelles. We, uh, we do have some accommodation there. Um, and uh, the only thing that, as per all of our programs, we arrange separately is the airfare and any uh, cancellation and travel medical insurance that you might need. So um, uh, in a moment, I'm going to ask for any questions that you might have of either Jackie or myself about this program, um, uh, just touching on airfare. So we will obviously, if you would like us to, we will set up a customized uh, air itinerary for you that covers either just South Africa or both South Africa and the Seychelles, or you also have the option of only doing the Seychelles if you wish. Um, and uh, some prices are indicated there in Canadian dollars. Um, of course, airfares are a little bit over the map these days um, with everything that's going on. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, in about 11 months prior is when we can start looking at airfares um, for this program. So in roughly December of this year. Uh, and uh, I say I'm about to take a few questions, uh, Jackie and I, um, but of course you're always welcome to email Paula or Barb uh, or call the office and uh, one, of, uh, one of them will pick up the phone uh, during business hours uh, and be happy to talk to you about that. And I stuck their numbers up there just so you have them. Um, Paula, what, uh, what questions do we, do we have from our members about this trip? Yes. So I had someone who asked about dietary requirements. How um, easy is it for a vegetarian to be accommodated on a trip like this? No vegetarians allowed. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, well, the food in South Africa is amazing, with, whether you eat meat or not. But maybe, Jackie, you want to touch on the point about uh, how they treat vegetarians in South Africa. Well, a true South African will say a vegetarian is someone who eats chicken, um, but no, um, <laughs> vegetarians, absolutely no problem. Um, vegans, no problem at all. Um, so yeah, we can cater for actually any dietary. We, the, the only, I think the only dietary requirement that, that is a little tricky for us is celiac, um, but otherwise we can do kosher, halal, vegetarian, vegan, um, gluten-free, lactose, we can do any of that. So absolutely no problem. Perfect. Thank you very much. And yeah, I do know some people will say they're vegetarian, but still eat fish or chicken. So it sometimes doesn't fall within the exact parameters of, of the definition, but that's all good. Um, the other question is that someone was asking with regards to the weather. So can you, like with regards to the two different regions and then day and night, um, what could they experience, especially with like outdoor dining options? Yeah, yeah, good point. Jackie, I'll let you touch on South Africa and I'll tell you about Seychelles in a second. Okay, so uh, South Africa, so uh, November is sort of very much the, um, the cusp, on the cusp of two seasons. Um, and so it's, it is warming up because we're going into summer. So it is warming up and, and the further north we get, the warmer it gets. Um, there, I would say that there is a chance of rain, um, again, just because it's, it's in that interim season. Um, but so we could have rain and we could have beautiful weather. Um, it's, it's, that, it's that variable. Um, daytime temperatures, I would say anything from, am I working in Fahrenheit or Celsius? Celsius. Celsius. <laughs> okay, so Celsius, um, I would say anything from 18 to 25 um, during the day. And then and in the evenings, it probably wouldn't go below about 15. Um, when you get up to Kwandwe, it's, it's normally a little warmer. So um, 
you know, if we're eating out at night, um, out in the Boma at night, uh, if it's a particularly cold night, then we wouldn't eat outside, we would eat inside. Um, all of the hotel rooms are heated um, and have air conditioning um, all the way along. And um, any sort of outdoor, uh, if the weather is cool, anytime we eat outdoors, there will always be braziers or um, outdoor heaters. So, um, so that's, yeah, that's sort of what we're looking at. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> I'll touch on the Seychelles. So the Seychelles is tropical. So I mean, basically, the days are around 30 degrees in the evening, it drops down to maybe 23, 24. So it's, uh, it's, I, I find the weather really nice. November is a little bit on more on the humid side, because you're just transitioning between um, uh, rainy and dry season. So you, you know, you're likely to get a few drops of rain here and there. But, um, you know, not so much that, uh, you know, you're not going to have a, a sort of a downpour for the whole time. So um, it's, uh, um, in any case, with both South Africa and the Seychelles, I can guarantee you'll have better weather than in Canada in November. Um, that's pretty much for <laughs> that. That we can guarantee, I think. <laughs> that, we, that, that we can. That's the one thing we can guarantee. <laughs> um, fantastic. I have a uh, Lynn's asking a question for us to describe the accommodation in Cape Town. We're, so we're staying in the Harbor Bridge Hotel in Cape Town, and I must say, I have not stayed in that hotel before. But uh, you suggested it, Jackie, and, and what's special about that hotel? Um, so it's located at the waterfront, um, but it's a new section of the waterfront right close to the cruise terminal. Um, so it's a very, it's a very vibey area, um, but also um, so beautiful views, lovely views of, of Table Mountain, views of the harbour. Um, and uh, it's... The rooms are, are modern, compact, um, comfortable, and um, you know I think just the location is nice because it's it's close to the waterfront, um, and there are a lot of restaurants and shops nearby, um, and it's it's kind of quintessentially Cape Town. Yeah, exactly. You'll, you'll see some. There's I think there's we have some photos in our uh, program itinerary, and if not, we can certainly send you some. It's a nice hotel. The, the thing for me about Cape Town is it's is as Jackie said it's location 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 so I kind of insisted on something near the so-called DNA waterfront that's kind of the bustling hub of the city from a from a you know a pedestrian standpoint if you will um, and we're right there which means everything's within walking distance you don't have to uh, you know because although Cape Town is generally safe during the day I know people you know heard a lot read a lot about South Africa and so um, you know, we don't want to stay too far away uh, from from the the heart of it all. And this is right. Fantastic. That's all the questions I've had come in so far to to share with you. But um, so I'll leave well, it with you. Sounds good. Well, if there are any other questions, you are, of course, welcome to email us at any time. Um, and if Paula or Barb don't know the answer to the question, they can always call me or they can always call Jackie. We are here at your disposal. So I want to take this opportunity to thank particularly our special guest, Jackie. Thank you for taking the time to dial in today from Cape Town. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate your uh, effort in, in uh, putting this program together for us. Um, I'm excited about it. I'm sure we're going to get a great response. Um, and so, uh, as I say, and thank you to all of our members for joining us today. Uh, today. I, I hope you found it useful and informative. Uh, a, re copy, a recording um, of the uh, webinar will be posted on our YouTube page uh, and will be sent out to you as well, as well as to anybody else who wasn't able to join us today. So thanks again. Uh, and I hope that we will see you uh, on this wonderful trip in South Africa next year. Um, have yourselves a wonderful day. And uh, once again, bye-bye to Jackie. Thanks, Gordon. It was fun. All right, fine. And uh, uh, yes, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>